good morning. Happy Wednesday to everybody. Of course, you know I've got my cup of coffee here for this mid-morning check-in that we have a chance to, to spend a few minutes together in the middle of the week. Just a, hopefully a little shot in the arm, as it were, to encourage you and to, to send you out as you go about the rest of your week. Uh, and, and we've been learning some pretty fascinating things on Sundays. We've been going through the book of Acts together. We got through chapter 7 this week and saw uh, one of the key events that will make the rest of the book of Acts unfold the way it does, and that is the, the martyrdom, the first Christian martyr, the martyrdom of Stephen. But what is so fascinating to me about Stephen, and I think I pointed this out Sunday and it bears repeating today, is, is Stephen is just an ordinary church member. Now, now, we don't think of him that way, probably, because there's this long section in the, the scripture devoted to him. But he's not an apostle. He's never named to that group of apostles. In fact, he's not even a church leader. The way we come into knowledge of who he is, is he is elected to serve people in the church, namely widows that are overlooked in taking care of their needs, the daily distribution of food. The Greek widows were overlooked. He is one of the Greek contingent of people that was set aside specifically for that task, that task of service. Again, an ordinary church member, an ordinary part of the body of Christ at that first church there that, that began in Jerusalem after the ascension of Jesus. And, and it's just a reminder as we look at his life, how important that the ordinary everyday Christian is, that, that our belief in Jesus as people who follow him should shape us, that that while we have leaders in church, like myself, who serves as a pastor, I'm not on a, on a different plane of spirituality as anybody. I, I am the same. We, we are on equal ground before God. We are all, in fact, uh, the New Testament coming out of the Old Testament picture. We're a kingdom of priests. And Stephen illustrates that so well that he, as an ordinary follower of Jesus, when given this opportunity to speak for himself, preaches, in, a, in essence, what is the longest sermon recorded in the book of Acts. Uh, and it's a fascinating one, and it obviously upset people enough that he becomes the first Christian martyr. But, but again, I, I can't stress enough, and I talked about the power of service on Sunday, but let me add to that, the power of service of everyday ordinary Christians is what makes the church go. It's what makes the church go in Acts. It will be a catalyst for the increasing mission and movement of the church as we continue in the study of the earliest church. And it is what makes any church today in the year 2021 go. The average ordinary Christian that just follows Jesus, grows, learns, and serves as he or she is able. That's what will make any church great. That's what made the early church great. And, and it's a reminder. I mean, even Jesus himself said uh, in, in Matthew chapter 11, I think it's about verse 11. It's kind of one of those that, that's easy to remember. He, he mentions John the Baptist and he said, there's no one greater born to women than John the Baptist. So, so that's pretty high praise. I mean, that's Jesus saying that about John the Baptist. No one greater born among women than John the Baptist. But he goes on and he says, but the least in the kingdom of God is greater even than John the Baptist. What's he saying? That the ordinary believer in Jesus Christ, the ordinary church member, as it were, has greater potential to be useful for the kingdom of God than John the Baptist. Now, I think there's some important reasons for that um, that, that I can just highlight quickly. Number one is John the Baptist ministered and preached before the death and resurrection of Jesus. We have the benefit of hindsight, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And secondly, we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit that is vitally important to allowing us to serve no matter who we are as everyday ordinary Christians in a way that glorifies God and sees the church grow. That's what we've been empowered to do. In fact, Jesus says to his disciples in John chapter 16, he says to them, this is kind of that long passage in John of the Last Supper right before he goes to the garden and the events of his arrest and trial and crucifixion happen. He says to his disciples, it is good for you that I go away. John 16, 7, he tells them that. It is good for you. It's a good thing that I go away. 
because if I go, or unless I go away, I cannot send the Holy Spirit. So it's only because Jesus left, eventually died, rose, and ascended that we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is a better thing, Jesus says, than if he stayed. And, and I'm guessing for us, that's hard to believe because we would probably think, you know, let's say we were in need of, of something. I think I've heard a couple of pastors, J.D. Greer among them, talk about this. You know, he says, uh, you know, listen, let's say we were trying to hire a staff member for our church, and I told you one of the candidates was Jesus Christ himself. We'd be like, boy, that'd be awesome, right? I mean, hire him on the spot. Don't need an interview. Close the process. It's over. He's done. Jesus says it's better that he goes away so that he can send the Spirit because the least in the kingdom of God is greater than even the greatest born among women, John the Baptist, because of the filling, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit that's possible through us. As, as Stephen illustrates, an ordinary Christian, not an apostle, not a church leader, but a servant for God in the local body, filled with the Spirit. That was said about him a couple of times, by the way, in Acts 6 and 7. Filled with the Spirit, does amazing things, and, and is able to, to leave such an indelible mark on the church that we still talk about him today because he simply was one of those that was willing to serve in whatever capacity it meant, even if it cost him his life, and he did that. And so that's my encouragement to us. You know, we need to understand all of us that are part of this church family are vitally important, that there are no, you know, bigger, greater Christians and smaller, lesser Christians. It's not, there's, there's clergy and, and non-clergy. I mean, there is in, in, in some ways, but but there's not that differentiation before God. Because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, all of us have, been, have the ability to serve. In fact, we often talk about spiritual gifts, um, that, that through his spirit, God gives gifts for the service of the church. Now, one thing that I, I this is kind of an aside, but one thing I don't really like is the spiritual gift inventory, because you know that usually talks about it's a bunch of questions that try to figure out which spiritual gift you have. Here's my revolutionary. I don't know if it's revolutionary to me. It seems counter to what I've heard a lot. I think God reserves the right to, through his spirit, to use any Christian and to gift any Christian at any moment with the spiritual gift they need in that moment to meet the need they're presented with. That my spiritual, I think I, I have a tendency, I have a uh, the way I'm put together, the way I like to study, the way, the way I, I like to read, the way I can synthesize information, I hope, and communicate it. I think I have unique abilities that, that allow me as a pastor to teach that way. Other people have that as well. Um, so, so I'm not saying we don't have tendencies or strengths, but I am saying at any moment, any Christian can be gifted with any of those spiritual gifts because that's the right of God to use us. It's not so much, hey, which, where's the niche I fit, but can I submit to the Spirit, the power of the Spirit, and allow Him to use me. And, and that might be at times in an area that I'm particularly skillful at. Um, it, sometimes it might be in an area that, I, that I'm passionate about. I love to study and teach the Bible. I'm passionate about that. I know a lot of people are. Sometimes that's it. Sometimes it's something that's just a need. I'm walking across the parking lot and it's dirty, and I spend a few minutes grabbing a garbage can and, and picking up trash. Not, you know, that's that's just the need. It's not something I'm passionate about. You know, and, and Jesus was the same way, right? That the greatest act of service, not the greatest, certainly was his death and resurrection. But, but one of the ones we point to in his life is when he washed his disciples' feet. That probably wasn't something that Jesus was just passionate about. Nobody would think of that. It was a need, and he could communicate to his disciples the importance of service, and he did that. And as we submit to the Spirit, that Spirit can prompt us Sometimes in skill, sometimes in passion, but sometimes just given the need, which is what I love. If I can dovetail a little bit to, to what's been going on lately, they, we call it around here Maintenance Mondays, and folks have been coming out on Mondays to do all sorts of things. Um, we've pressure washed, we've painted, uh, we as in they, I should say. I haven't been really a part of it, but, but a whole bunch of people have done that. Just, just regular, ordinary people so using some of their skills. Yeah, we have people with particular skills that have come and used that to, to make sure. Some people are better painter than others and, and the like. We painted, pressure washed, done a lot of things around here 
Um, and, and you know why that's important? George Barna, who's a researcher, he does research on different things. He came up with this statement. He says, you know, your sermon starts in the parking lot. And by that, he, he through his research, found out this interesting statistic. I wrote it down so I'd get it right. About 70% of the first time guests that come to any church decide in the first seven minutes that they're on the property, whether they'll come back or not. The first seven minutes, seven out of 10 people decide whether they'll come back. That's before, for most of them, before the first note is played by our band. It's before the first introductory comments are made on the sermon. The sermon starts the moment they pull on this church property and 70% of our first time guests will decide in the first seven minutes whether they'll ever be back. And what will shape that decision will probably be interactions not with worship team, not necessarily with deacons, not with me as the pastor, but with regular, everyday, ordinary Christians that they might run into, whether it's in the parking lot or when they come into the building. It might happen because they look at something around the property and make up their mind about a, 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 something that, that maybe they feel like isn't up to sm snuff, like it's not clean enough or it's not not maintenance area, which is why Maintenance Mondays is part of the sermon. The sermon that starts in the parking lot, Maintenance Mondays is helping with that. Anyway, that's off a little bit of the subject, but it's just a reminder how important all of us are in the body of Christ. Let, let me give this commercial, by the way, that ties into that. All of us are important, which is why this Sunday, the 24th, after our morning service, we have a very important special called business meeting. The reason for the business meeting, we've been promoting this for a couple of weeks, is to go over some revisions to our church bylaws. Now we have copies of the current bylaws and the proposed bylaws. There's a lot of changes. That's why we have full copies of both that you can get. We have hard copies you can come by the church to get, or we have digital copies we can email you. We hope if you've had a chance, you've gotten your copy, you've spent some time reading through it, looking over it, coming up with questions, because that's the purpose of the business meeting, that, that we get together and we discuss what's in there and 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 you know the idea isn't hey we did it you just need to come in and okay it the idea is we want your we need your input all of us together as the church body have more collective wisdom than one or two or five people and, and it comes out of the deacons is the process our bylaws are structured by the uh, corrections or uh, amendments or revisions to come out of the deacons. More than that, small group of individuals that look over them, and even when consulting with a lawyer, the church body as a whole, when all of us come together, there's more wisdom, there's more insight. We do better work together when we consider these things. So please, if you haven't requested or picked up your copy, do that. Plan to stick around on Sunday after church. You have to be here in person. We're, this won't be streamed. It won't be online. It'll be an in-person business meeting. There'll be ample time for questions, uh, for, for trying to discuss the changes or propose. We, we don't even know if we can do it all in one meeting. It might take us more than one meeting. So we'll deal with what we can and decide, depending on how it goes, when, when or if we need to take a break, when or if we're ready to act and vote on it. So that's the plan. And why do we do that? Why do we have that what's called congregational polity where everybody comes together? Because we believe all of us, God works through everyday ordinary Christians. All of us, given his spirit, have the ability and are important in the process of moving our church forward to reach our community with the gospel. So please plan to be a part of this. I feel like I've tried to throw a lot in in these few minutes. I hope I haven't talked too fast. My wife's been reminding me. Sometimes I, I, I talk real fast, so I'm trying to be better about that. I think I failed miserably today. But nonetheless, always appreciate those of you who stick with me for these few minutes on Wednesdays. I'm going to go finish up my cup of coffee, get ready for tonight's study uh, of the Old Testament, and look forward to worshiping on Sunday with all of you, whether in person or online, and look forward to the process we're going to go through with our bylaws starting at that business meeting. So I'll leave that with you today. Hope you have a great Wednesday, and we'll see you hopefully sometime this week, if not before Sunday.